Good morning, everyone. We're back. We're back. And today we have a lot of great stuff to talk about. There's a ton of people on the lines, and I always have to make the disclaimer, we're not here to diagnose you or cure your cancer. If there's anything that we say that uh, even gets close to curing anything, just realize that we didn't we're not trying it. to do that. We're just basically um, giving you things to research. Check with your doctor before applying anything that we say. All Good. right. Good. Now, Karen, um, yeah. I tell you what, you see who's, go who's on, on social media. I'm going to go right to Maria. She's been waiting patiently. Okay. She's from New York, and she had a very interesting question. Are you there, yeah. Maria? Maria? No. Maria, are you there? All right, Maria, I tell you what, we're going to come back to you, uh, and we're going to go right to Alma from El Paso. Are you there, Alma? I'm suspecting the mic. Is the mic connected? <laughs> Do we have uh, callers on the line, everything hooked up here? That's what I... I wonder if we tested this. All okay. Right. So, um... I came with Dr. Berg and Karen. I think we're having a few technical issues, which we'll fix on the phones. Maybe you can go to YouTube in the interview. Yeah. Okay, so okay, I, I want to talk so about something really important. Good, because this is... Um, you know, when I tell people, like, stop eating when you're full and don't snack, mm -hmm. um, I think there's a big confusion on that because... Um, Typically, when you're, have you ever been like full but still hungry for something or Get not the, satisfied? Like the munchies. Yeah. Got a munch. So the difference between feeling satisfied and feeling full is a different, they're two different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you ever notice people like at an event or a social event that they'll, they'll keep eating even though they're full or stuffed? I've heard, <laughs> I've heard about heard people, people like doing that. that. I've seen. Rumors? I've seen, <laughs> you don't see rumors. But I've seen it happen. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> I am going to create a video on all the reasons um, or all the things that would cause someone not to be satisfied. Because really, if you're trying to do keto and you're trying to do intermittent fasting and you're not satisfied, like you'll eat but you just need a little something something, uh -huh. then that means that um, there's a problem. And there's actually four different reasons for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do a video on that. Mm, so That's a teaser. Well, what I want to do is I want to find out if anyone on social media actually has a situation with um, not feeling satisfied when you eat. You just ate, but you're still not satisfied. Hmm. Let us know right now. Okay, we're going to be waiting for your answers. Good. And uh, right. in the meantime... Um, let's see. Let's see let's if I see. can... Let's see, and I'm going to say, Steve... Maria, are you there? Is Maria there? Okay. Let's just test to see if this, one way to find out if it's um, what the problem is. Uh, what about Veronica? Are you there, Veronica, from Puerto Rico? Oh, this, it's a problem with our system. Interesting. Ah, okay. So I think it's a simple problem. And Steve, you're going to have to fix that real fast. But we have a lot, a lot of things to talk about. Mm-hmm. I think, should we just give them a quiz right away? Yeah, let's have a quiz. And, and Steve? Steve? Yes, ma'am. To add to it, I don't see YouTube here. Oh, my goodness. Well, stand by. All right, guys, here's the first quiz. And the first quiz, um, what has more sodium? An 8-ounce can of tomato soup or a large slice of pizza? Hmm. I think I know the answer to that. So, give me your answer. Let me know. Now, um, one thing I noticed that, um, Steve, we didn't do, we didn't test the mics. We didn't test the mics. Stevie has YouTube, so, it's so we're going to find out uh, why this mic doesn't work here, because we didn't <laughs> test it. This never happens, right? It never happens that we have any technical difficulties. Well, it's it's why don't you just go pre vacation. Like I'm looking. Did anyone answer? Tomato soup, pizza. Okay. Soup. Soup. Pizza. 
I know. I'd like to give my guess. Can I do that? Yeah, go ahead. What do you think? I say soup. Really? Yeah. You, you're holding to, uh, I'm holding hold to, to the, that? I'm holding to soup. soup. Mm -hmm. Because I think cans of stuff like that are just cram-packed with s sodium. What about um, like pizza? That's salty, right? Well, only if you add salt. Or I guess it depends on the sauce you're using. Okay. Well, the answer is soup. Yeah! You are correct. So <coughs> a can of soup has uh, 1,260 milligrams of sodium. Oh, my gosh. And a slice of pizza is like 982 uh, milligrams of sodium. It does. Yeah. So that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that is interesting. Um, what about bread? A slice of the bread, do you think that has any sodium? Well, I'm sure it has some. It really has about 210 milligrams. Um, you wouldn't think they would put that much salt, but there's a good amount of salt in um, bread. And then, um, so I think since we're on the topic of salt, Karen, mm -hmm. uh, I want to mention this. There, you know, people say, well, salt causes high blood pressure, it causes stroke, it causes heart disease. It's actually not necessarily the salt, it's the potassium deficiency. Because if you have too much salt, that creates a deficiency in potassium. So you always need to kind of put back in potassium and you can tolerate a lot more salt. Um, so, but you can actually overdo it with the salt. The more salt that you have, the more um, potassium you're gonna have to need. You're gonna need. So, let's see if Maria is there. Are you there, Maria? Yes, I'm here. Yay. Wow, we got it. It's a Great. Christmas you miracle. Good morning, Dr. Berg. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. So Karen. Sorry. Hi. So terrible. Yeah, That's it's no all problem Steve's at all. <laughs> okay, what's your question? I wanted to know your opinion on polycystic kidney disease. My husband inherited this disease from his father. He's 42 and he's taking like Prinosil as a precaution, not as a necessity. My, doc my husband went to the doctor yesterday and his kidney measured a little larger than the normal size. Uh, he's at moderate risk for the for progression due to the size. Um, uh, uh, his doctor wants to put him on 12 up, 12 up 10 to slow the progression down. Yeah. It's, it's too expensive for my new family right now and it has side effects that my husband um, is worried about. Yeah. What can I do uh, aside okay. from keto? Uh, you know, what can I do beyond keto to help my husband? He's not doing intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. and I control his I control his uh, dinners, but not his breakfast and his lunch. Okay. Quick question. Very very quick question. When they when he has his urine measured, um, does it show any ab abnormal findings or not? He didn't have his urine measured. He had an ultrasound done. Okay. So here's, here's, here's what I would do, uh, Maria. I would basically um, do an, uh, get a test from your doc and see if there's a any abnormal findings with the kidney. For example, is there blood in the urine? Is there uh, excessive uric acid in the urine? Is there, um, is there creatinine? Is there um, excess protein in the urine? Is there a problem with filtration? Do a complete kidney analysis. See if there's any problem. Uh, if there is, then you can kind of dig down what you need to do as far as nutrition. But uh, I think the best thing he needs to do is not just keto, but the healthy version of keto because he's going to have to have the nutrients um, to actually help protect the kidney for any future problems as well as intermittent fasting. That's going to be very, very vital. Realize, too, that the nutrition for the kidney is virtually the same as for the liver. So like things like milk thistle are really good for kidney function as well as liver function, and um, keeping the diet squeaky clean. That's going to be the most important thing. Um, but unless we, you know, a lot of times people have polycystic uh, kidney problems and they don't have anything necessarily abnormal in their urine. But um, I would just do the normal thing at this point because you really haven't done that evaluation. Thank you so much for your call. All right, Eric, St. Petersburg, um, you had a question about your HDL on keto. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, Dr. Good Morgan morning. And Karen. Hi. Um, I started the keto diet 18 days ago after I watched quite a few of your YouTubes, and I've been very compliant. I had my lipids checked at my physical before I started the diet, and then yesterday I had them repeated, 
and I had dramatic reductions in cholesterol, triglycerides, my LDH, and my non-HDL to almost normal ranges. My cholesterol went down 50 points wow, in 18 in days. 18 wow, days. that's good. From, from 233 to 183, and my triglycerides were 226 down to 118. Awesome. Wow. My question was, my HDL, which has always been pretty good, went from 49 down to 39. So I don't understand why all the lipids would improve except the HDL, which is a good cholesterol. So why did that drop? Ten it's, points. It's because your your other values dropped, and so that one follows follows the other ones. Because think about it, cholesterol is an exchange thing. The, the HDL is the cholesterol going from the cells back to the liver. LDL is going from the liver to the cells. So if you get a lowering of cholesterol over here, you're going to have to have a lowering of cholesterol in this. It's just balancing it out. It's not a bad thing. The good thing is the most important thing is your is low triglycerides and uh, also low LDL. Um, even, even with a lot of people on keto, the LDL will go up, but what they don't realize is that there's actually a good and bad LDL. There is um, different types, and I did a video on this recently, and um, you, you never get, you're, you're rarely ever gonna see, unless you have some genetic disease, a problem with the, the bad version of LDL being worsened with keto. Um, that's not where you're gonna see. What, what's happening with you is because you're dropping the refined sugars and carbs, your body is no longer converting those into cholesterol. So that's a good thing. So as long as the LDL triglycerides are good and things are going the right direction, I, I wouldn't even worry about the other one going down too, simply because it's just that your body's just adjusting and there's, it's, it has to keep the right amount of exchange going on. Thanks for your question. All right. You want to jot down some more? Or you oh, no, we can get started. Because okay, usually good. once I start mentioning it, people uh, chime in. Okay, good. What do we got? So we have people from uh, Kentucky. I mean, all over the United States. <laughs> I started to write them down, but it's obviously all over the U.S. Norway, Portugal, Rwanda, so Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Germany, Bangladesh, France, Sweden, Abu Dhabi, that Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates. Sorry about that. Canada, India. Wow, that's and awesome. And that's just so far, and I'm sure everybody now is going to tell me where they're coming from. Okay, so Tracy has a question about juice fasting in your opinion. Yeah, so, you know, there's all these different types of fast. You have water fast, you have um, fat fast, juice fast. What that means is you're consuming that product with fasting. Um, it really depends. Are you doing apple juice? <laughs> now, if you're doing some vegetable juice without any fruit, I, I think that's going to be fine. I think, I think it can give you some added benefit, especially if you um, are kind of dealing with some type of chronic issue um, because the benefits of some of these juices that people are doing, especially if they're greens, is that you get these added um, phytonutrient spikes. And Yes, they do contain a certain degree of anti-nutrients, but they, on the flip side, they contain massive anti-cancer factors, uh, massive antioxidant factors, things that can improve your cardiovascular function and your blood sugars. So there's so many, ben the benefits far outweigh the negatives. Uh, so I think, I think I like that if you're trying to do a certain thing, but um, realize too, when you're doing a pure fast just with water, you are bolstering your own uh, antioxidant networks. So you're actually making more glutathione and these other um, antioxidants that your body can use to fight off things. So That was awesome. I, I just have to say the countries uh, that are flooding in, this is fun, so I'm going to read them. Okay, good. Okay, so in addition to what I already said, we have people watching from the UK, Poland, Philippines, Mexico, Malaysia, Estonia, Australia, Morocco, South Africa, Cyprus, Pakistan, Oman, Syria, wow, Spain, great. Japan, Egypt. Awesome, awesome. And I'm, I'm sure it's going to go on. I'm still waiting for someone to actually listen to us from um, France. No, I said France. Oh, you did? Finally. Okay, good. Yeah, France. Okay, good. Great. France is now, in the house. Good. Now, Thank you. Now we can sleep at now night. Now we can sleep at night. 
Right. So, um, but I wanted to mention because we had some early on from Boca Raton and the villages, which are in Florida. And I want to say, I think that the villages needs a Dr. Berg keto and intermittent fasting club. You guys do a lot of stuff down there. You have to, if you're watching this and you follow Dr. Berg, you have to lead the way down there. Because I think people who stay in the villages are all about living. Love it. And so let us know if you start a club down there and get everybody in the villages on Keto and IF. And that's my Christmas wish. Okay, good. Um, Veronica from Puerto Rico, since you're talking about villages, uh, is <laughs> tuning in. She wants to know how to maintain a fast once after success. Are you there? Yes, I am. Hello. Hello, hello. to you and your wonderful eyes. Hello, hello. Yes. Um, I I reach um, under my goal weight. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually really thin following everything I've ever seen you do on YouTube. Thank you so much. Um, but in the beginning, I could fast up to four days, three days, and I felt good. I felt great. Now, if I so much as go into a 24-hour fast, I literally feel like I'm going to die if I don't eat. Mm. So I don't, I don't know if it's because my, I don't have either body fat or I, I don't know. Mm. And it bumps me out because I loved fasting in the beginning. Yeah. Okay, so here's, here's a little point. You, you do need some fat to fast with, <laughs> and uh, you could be at the point. Like, you're, like you want to let your body tell you um, if you should fast or not fast. Majority of people who have excess weight just thrive on fasting. It does very good. But if you actually think about it, when you get down to a very low weight and you're kind of skinny and you're doing like four-day fast, um, it's a little bit of a borderline between your body going, wait a second, I don't have enough of this storage. Um, I may need to tap into the muscle. So your body is going to tell you, okay, you know what, maybe you go 24 hours, maybe you go 48 hours, but don't go four days. I would just pay attention to the body because who knows what's going on with, with that. I mean, you could, you could try to add um, like those uh, keto essential aminos I had for the protein and see if that doesn't just solve it like that because that way you're replacing these amino acids. Um, and I'm guessing you have enough nutrient reserves because you're taking them. I don't know. That's another factor that your body will then go, hey, wait a second. Um, you ran out of nutrients. You need to take more. But protein is probably the the biggest indication that your body's like, okay, I need to stop fasting because I'm low on amino acids. All right, and then let's go to Carrie from Bell Camp, Maryland. You had a question about post-bariatric surgery. You gained weight? Tell me about that. Hi, Dr. Berg. Yes, hi. hi. Um, I am a post-op bariatric patient. I'm about six years out now. Mm -hmm. And my starting weight was 340 after having kids. I lost 150 pounds altogether, but I have recently regained 50 of it due to medication for fibromyalgia. Um, I had packed on a, a, a good bit back. Um, nothing, else, none, nothing else has changed in my routine. I'm trying keto for the first time, and I was wondering how to make this work for me since obviously a bariatric lifestyle consists of a higher protein intake. Right. I have a question for you. Um, sure. When you had fibromyalgia, where, did, where was the pain? Was it mainly on the right side or all over? It's all over. It's chronic pain. I have in my hips, at my joints, everything. My back is very knotted up. I, can, I used to walk every single day. And as soon as I started walking, and I had... Um, doctors, I had chiropractors put me through tests, and I, I just had a little bit of a scoliosis, but not much, but nothing was wrong with my back. Okay. Everything was fine. So I've been through MRIs. The doctor said fibromyalgia. I think this is, so the, 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 I easiest, just, I think this is the easiest problem to solve in the world. Okay. okay. Are you sitting down? Are you sitting down? All right. Here, here's what I would do. I'm sitting. You, you, <laughs> one thing that you haven't done yet is keto. Probably you haven't done intermittent fasting. The two things together, reducing insulin, in addition to you, you had gastric bypass. That there's a lot of data that gastric bypass will pull someone out of diabetes because 
you're no longer triggering the little sensor in your small intestine that will spike insulin. So that's why it works for some people. But the thing is, if you do keto, and I have a whole video that you can search out on gastric bypass and what you should eat and the nutrition you should take, you should watch that today and start it, and then you apply intermittent fasting, your inflammation levels will go down and you'll start losing weight and you'll feel much, much better. It's like, it's so easy. You just need to do what we're recommending. That's the only thing that you haven't done yet, which is um, the exact thing that you need to do. So go ahead and try that. And, and then call us back after one week of doing that. All right, Karen. Yeah. Here okay. Uh, so Amy wants to know, does stevia break your fast? Okay. She's concerned about the electrolytes. No. It won't break your fast because it's hardly any calories. It's less than one gram and there's not going to be an insulin spike, and there's not an actual sugar. It's just a sweet uh, plant. It's an and, herb. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, grows almost like a weed. If you're into it in the spring, you should plant some, and it will grow with almost no help from you, and you will end up with a massive stevia plant that you can use any way you want. You can yeah. dry it, grind it up. Yeah. That's it is a, green. It's the best way, because when they process, uh, a lot of times when they make stevia, they put a bunch of, I mean, they either, they put, they have it with sugar and it's a process. So if you make your own, that's the, the ideal scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You can grind it up and put it in your tea or whatever. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Jamie yeah. said that, um, and I don't know if it's Jamie girl or Jamie guy, but Jamie's liver hurts when um, doing keto. Why would that be? I think it's the fat. I think uh, you need, to, you, you may not have enough bile um, to handle that amount of fat. So I would maybe back off on the fat and especially addition, uh, like extra things like MCT oil, coconut oil, extra butter, keto, extra peanut butter. keto fat bombs, like right. don't have any of that. And, um, and then you may need some purified bile salts uh, as in the gallbladder formula and you might need, need hydrochloric acid as in the tain hydrochloride or the digestive formula that we have. And those two will help take the pressure off the gallbladder, which is a, um, an extension of the liver. So that's what I would do if I were you. Good. Okay? So someone asks, what is a good book for a newbie? You got it? Yeah, I do have that <laughs> right here. We happen to have one. This is the, the newbie guide book right here. Okay, you hold it up. I'll hold this. Um, if you go to my website and you get this, you get this one free. And this is to get right into it. it. takes you 45 minutes. You can read this thing real quick and then fill in the blank with this right here. That way yeah, you have everything of pictures in you here. need to know. Um, a lot of diagrams and examples yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, you can go to the website drberg.com and there are videos. In, in order of start, like start importance. video one, start yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Video two, start here. So if you're a newbie <coughs> and you're just learning about uh, the ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting, go to drberg.com. At the top bar, you'll see, I think it's resources or? It's called blog. It's called blog. Okay, no, I think yeah. there's another one. But um, you get all your beginner videos there. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And also, uh, if you search out uh, Dr. Berg beginner videos, I have a bunch. Hmm. Uh, I want to go to Dave from Utah. Okay. Uh, Dave, are you there? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm here. Great. Um, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Oh, yes. I have a question. I just wanted to, could you do a video on, on um, the pros and cons of plant-based diets? And, um, and, and the, um, I noticed there's a lot of danger behind it as well. And so I'm not, I'm never going to do it because I know that it's not, the, it's not smart for the body because it causes a lot of problems. But because I'm a pro ketogenesis, um, anyway, so this morning if you could ever do a video on um, on the pros and cons of plant-based diet and why it could be dangerous and why it could be beneficial. Yeah, I think I, I do have a recent video that sort of answers that, uh, and I probably should. The only thing is that it stirs up a hornet's nest with uh, certain people that are plant-based that that uh, will start doing anti Dr. Berg videos. But here's the thing. Um, I have no problem with someone doing plant-based if they actually do plants versus just pure sugar and grains and stuff like that. So there's a way to do
do it. Totally, there's a way to do it if you know what you're doing and you, you can do it healthily. It's more difficult if you're doing keto because of the carbs and then the, the, the amount of protein and then also some missing nutrients. Um, but on the flip side of that, um, there, I just did a video on um, you know, eggs and you know, cholesterol. Uh, if you look at some of the studies that um, some people that say that it's, keto's bad because it's gonna clog your arteries, you're gonna be shocked to find out those studies are um, very subjective. They're based on questionnaires. They're based on incomplete information. They're sponsored by vested interest groups. So uh, watch those videos and then you'll be able to decide for yourself uh, if that's right for you. All right, I just need to go to Shirley from Buffalo, New York. Are you there, Shirley? Yes, I am. How is the weather Hello. right now? Oh, cold. <laughs> Buffalo. It, it, but the, the sun is out, so, you know, that's a good day. That's what they <laughs> care about in Buffalo. I went to college in Buffalo. And it, 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 this? Oh. Yeah, it, where it snows up and your nose freezes and your eyeballs freeze and... Yeah, it's definitely. And everyone's used to it. They're like, eh, let's go outside, hang out. A couple of years ago, we had seven feet. <laughs> oh, that my is gosh. Crazy. That is no, crazy. Yeah. It's okay. We love it. I yes. Know. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. Um, the reason I'm calling is because I was, on, I was watching your videos and I was on keto and intermittent fasting. I have a history of elevated pancreatic enzymes previously. And um, so my doctor took a routine blood work. I had no symptoms, and my pancreatic enzymes were off the charts. So I stopped my keto diet right away. Um, and I'm, I was very concerned that somehow the fats that I was eating, I, I stayed within the ranges. I was counting them through Carb Manager, um, but somehow activated this. And I wondered if you could advise me about that. Okay, this is my thought on that. Um Usually, when your enzymes go up in the pancreas, anything related to keto, it's, there's something going on with the gallbladder and either the, the sludge or possible stone or some type of um, constriction of the little tubes that go from the liver down to the small intestine that are also then merged with the ducts that go to the pancreas. So if, let's say, for example, there's a little obstruction there because there's some type of problem with maybe consuming a little too much fat, that can back up and cause either inflammation of the pancreas, but especially increase in uh, lipase, which is an enzyme from the pancreas. So one of the reasons why people have high lipase is that they have a kidney stone. Uh, so this is what I would do if I were you. Um, I would not add any extra fat to your diet. MCT oil, any of that stuff. Just have the fat that's normally with the food and I would actually add a good amount of vegetables first. And then secondly, I would add um, some digestive help, either betaine hydrochloride for the stomach and then or purified bile salts after the meal. And start acidifying the stomach so you can digest better. But the point is I think you just need help with your gallbladder, which will indirectly help with the pancreas. And also watch my video on called uh, gallbladder flush. It's a manual uh, technique that you can actually do just to get those organs working a little bit better. So that's what I would do if I were you. But since you brought that up, I do want to mention one point, Karen, that I think is important. Okay. Um, as you know, we recommend the healthy version of keto right. and to get all your nutrients. And yes, we do recommend a good amount of vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, but the order of when, when you consume vegetables, I think, is vital. Because mm -hmm. if you actually start eating the protein first and then have your salad second, somehow it just doesn't work. People don't ever finish that salad. So I personally always, Steve, consume my vegetables first before the protein and the eggs or anything else. So I'm like, the have this big salad. I'm going to eat that thing. And then the cupcake. No, no, no. Then the protein. Very, very last. It seems to be a simple thing, but it seems to work. Uh, the other way, it just doesn't seem to work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's your personal experience. That's my personal experience and my personal tip of the day. Okay, good. I like it. I okay, like good. it. So I have some questions. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, first of all, um, 
We have a gal who says, I believe it's a gal, uh, they get um, forgettable and irritable when trying to do keto, beginning keto. Advice. Well, there's a lot of things that happen when you first start. Um, and I'm assuming you're doing the healthy version of keto, like we talk about in the book here, this one, um, because there could be the type of foods that you're eating. There's so many different, like there's MSG and deli meats and all sorts of things, so that could be an issue. Um, so uh, it's usually going to be a uh, deficiency either in the B vitamins or potassium. And then because when you do keto, there's two things that happen. The requirement for B vitamins goes up. So if, you don't, if you're already deficient, which most people are, they might actually experience some symptoms, whether it's keto fatigue, irritability, whatever. Secondly, it could be you're dumping all this fluid and you're also losing potassium and magnesium, in which case that can, it's the opposite of feeling calm. You're going to feel on edge, things like that. And then the, la the third thing is just digestion. I would focus on the digestive system and make sure you're taking apple cider vinegar so you can digest this food because it is a change. Um, so, you know, your body just might not get used to it, um, might not be used to it quite right off the bat. Okay? Okay, good. So, uh, lots of questions coming in about uh, menopause, pre, peri, the whole thing. How, to, to put them all together, how would keto or intermittent fasting support that phase of menopause? What happens during menopause is the adrenal gland has to do all the work now. It's backing up the ov ovaries because you're, you're losing the ovaries, they're going in retirement. So now the same hormones are being produced by the adrenal in a smaller amount. So if there's any weakness within the adrenal system and you go through menopause, things are exaggerated. Now the question is, does keto worsen that? And that's absolutely not. If you do it right, it's actually going to take the stress off the adrenal couple reasons. Um, one is that ketones are, are a, a preferred fuel by the brain, by the heart. They give you more oxygen than glucose. They um, also act like as an antioxidant. Um, and so it's not going to add more stress. It's going to actually, I actually did a video on um, ketones and adrenal stress. It actually will take the stress off your body and help you. But I will say, mm. Karen, um, when women do go through menopause, their estrogen does drop significantly. And the ratio of progesterone might, might drop even worse, depending on what's going on. So they might have vaginal dryness, hot flashes, memory loss, hair loss, uh, lost collagen. Hot and then, flashes. Yeah. And then the bladder. Poor sleep. The support of the bladder stents, you don't have that. So then the bladder drops. So now you have a prolapsed bladder. So you have all sorts of issues. Um, and I'm going to do a video on that, on how to raise the estrogen, but there's, there's herbal things you can do. But the biggest thing, the two biggest things that I would do is I would realize that estrogen is made out of cholesterol. So do not go low fat. Increase the amount of fats in the diet, like eggs and things like that. And then the other thing is make sure you don't overtrain. Because if you're overtraining, like you're working out every day, and you're not resting in between the workout, that's more cortisol stress that can actually slow you down. So you need I knew to I had a good reason not to work out. Not to work out. <laughs> 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 okay, and um, being winter, there's some questions coming in yeah. about colds and things like that. So how would keto, healthy keto and intermittent fasting support maybe, you know, help prevent, minimize or or support someone who's got that? Well, Cold you're, or flu you're asking the question, how can keto and IF help the immune system? And basically, in, in a I'm big asking. way, especially intermittent fasting, because you're going you're gonna to put the body into a real interesting state of um, fighting off. It's like it goes into, like, like if you have uh, autoimmune disease or inflammation and you do the fasting, it improves that situation. So you're going to drop inflammation. You're going to fight things better. And in fact, when people get sick, they lose their appetite. When animals get sick, they stop eating. So that's just a normal mechanism. But recently, I noticed my back, low back, was killing me. Hmm. So I'm like, duh, vitamin D. Mm. So I know we haven't had any three, sun in like two took days. Three, the bam, gone. Like wow, it's just completely gone. So back pain is a good indication that you need more D, mm. and uh, it's also good for your immune system as well as 
zinc. On that, that being said, Helen's yes. been waiting patiently. She's from go Denmark. To Helen. Mm -hmm. um, go to Denmark. Helen. Okay. Hello, okay, Helen, hello, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, hello, Dr. Berg and Karen. Hello. Hello. And hello. Thank you so much. So, uh, by the way, I am not calling from France, but I'm French. I was going to so say. So that should count. Oh, so I So you said Denmark, but you sound French. I am totally French. No, I'm not totally French. I'm French for sure. But yeah, anyway, I'm a traveling French. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay, so I have a question on uh, nutritional yeast. And um, if you allow me two questions on, on that, but anyway, I will try with one first. So since nutritional yeast is so um, rich in B1, zinc, and so forth, um, I have a tendency to take a lot of it, like 10 tablespoons per day, for example. Not, not every day, but sometimes. And since it's also rich in protein, I was wondering, um, you know, that type of protein, how well does it transform into body tissue? Mm -hmm. And um, you made a video recently, I think two months ago, regarding, uh, you know, the different um, assimilation of yeah. protein into body tissue. So how does it compare to, say, for example, eggs or meat? Okay, so first of all, Great question. Um, you're, you're consuming um, individual amino acids. You're going to get a really good absorption from that. The body doesn't have to break it down. But I don't know. I don't know how that compares to eggs. I do know eggs, if you're eating food by itself, is the highest. Well, I'm sorry, second. Uh, breast milk is a little bit higher. But um, eggs are the top of the food chain. But you're, I think you're going to also get a good amount of uh, protein from that nutritional yeast. That's my guess, but I can't prove it. Um, but that's a very good question. Very good question. Um, I'll have to do more research on that. All right. Well, thank you so much for your call. And I'm sorry I couldn't answer that fully. Okay. So now, James, you're calling from Arkansas. You had a question about decaf coffee? That's correct, Dr. Berg. And thank you for taking my call. Sure. And. Uh, my question was whether or not it was possible to have too much decaf coffee, and uh, if so, how much would be too much, and what sort of issues could it cause? Yeah. And especially in relation to uh, having any adverse effect on ketosis or autophagy. Good question. Now, I know part of that question, I don't know all of it, I'll have to look at if it affects autophagy. I do not think it's going to affect autophagy too, too much, simply because it's not a lot of calories. But I will say that the... Um, I don't know if your, your coffee that you're consuming is um, organic or not. Coffee is one of the products um, that is heavily exposed to pesticides and things like that and herbicides. So that's one problem with coffee. Now, the thing you're going to get is you're going to get a lot less caffeine, which is really good for your adrenals. And you'll probably not have as much uh, depletion of B1 um, and a little less liver stress. Um, but there's also chemicals that they use to pull the caffeine out. So if you're doing a water, I think it's called a water filter type process, that might be a lot better. But that's pretty much all I know about it. So I'll have to do a video on, on the rest of it. But thanks for your future idea for a video. All right, Karen. Yeah. Okay, so the um, question comes up every week. Yeah. What to do about hair loss when you're doing keto. Yeah, um, trace minerals, B vitamins, trace minerals, B, B vitamins. vitamins. Now, if you, there's other reasons for hair loss, like um, you might have high DHA, which is a type of um, um, powerful estrogen, which women can have as well, uh, especially if they get something like polycystic ovarian syndrome. What's interesting um, is that when when, you can, when a woman consumes excessive refined sugars and carbs, their androgens go higher. So they get the facial hair, a deep voice, and they lose their hair, and the hair gets thin okay, because mm -hmm. the DHA effect on the hair. When men are exposed to sugar or refined carbs, their testosterone goes down. Hmm. So they, become, they have a higher voice, and they their estrogen hair. goes higher, and their skin, yeah, they lose hair, and they, 
their skin becomes very thin. This Mother Nature's just curse. Mother Nature evil. joke on It is your evil. Right. It's a joke. Yeah, you just have to have a sense of humor as you're getting old. Right. And do keto. That's right, Karen. Okay. So um, someone asks, how do you get 4,700 milligram or micrograms of potassium every day? Well, you meant milligrams. Milligrams. Well, even if you okay. consume 10 cups of vegetables, you're going to get close to, closer to that, but you, but you need to also factor in a lot of the other foods that you're eating, too. Even, even meat and uh, other foods will have potassium, mm. so, but the vegetables are the easy way to get it, having large salads. So we recommend 7 to 10 cups. Now, if it's not easy that. to do that. I can do that, um, but you might need to work up to it. Um, a lot of people are doing an enhanced version of they're actually doing the electrolytes, which actually add more potassium. So that's what a lot of people do. Uh, I do that. I do it every morning. I have the potassium. So you might want to have that to substitute. But it's actually regular food. It's going to have to be the large salads. What about the veggie solution and potassium? Is it as much it's as not, the electrolytes? It, no, no, it's not. It's a, the veggie solution is um, different than the wheatgrass because the veggie solution is a complete um, vegetable like with the fiber. Mm -hmm. The wheatgrass juice powder is like a concentrated, super concentrated greens product for the, for the phytonutrients mainly. Right. But the veggie solution is kind of like just a replacement for vegetables. And it's like virtually raw, it's dehydrated, it's high quality, it has a very good amount of protein, very low in carbs, has, has some good nutrition, but it's not nearly as concentrated as the wheatgrass juice powder, which is about 13 times more concentrated. Okay, but the question is, if vegetables get you the potassium and you supplement with electrolytes, do the, does the veggie solution have the same in potassium. It has it has equivalent to a salad. So like um, one scoop is three cups of a serving of a salad. Okay. So it'd have that much. So if you were doing uh, salads and veggie solution, you would get your potassium. You could potentially get your potassium if you had enough of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Lavita from San Diego, no San Antonio, Texas, has been waiting patiently. Are you there, Lavita? And that yeah. I do not. Okay, tell you what, I'll have uh, Terry just kind of get your attention while I go to Trey from uh, <laughs> Boston. Are you there? Hello. Hi, Trey. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, how are you doing? So, um, I've been pretty bad with my health up until my um, 24 years old, and I've been diagnosed with like obesity. Okay. So I went to the, uh, I got blood work done, and turns out. All my uh, blood work is normal except for my cholesterol. They say that I have 160 LDL, and they want to put me on statins. Right, right. right. Question, <laughs> I, question I have. Um, are you doing keto and IF yet? I am now. Okay, so you just started. So here's, here's my answer, and I know you are getting older. You're 24, so it's a perfect time to get started with this. Um, but. The answer is yes, you need to do healthy keto and IF because that is the thing that will help make the big change in your cholesterol profiles because you're, gonna, you're taking the carbs down. So now those carbs are no longer going to be converting to the cholesterol. They're going to be used, uh, you're going to be shifting over to burn up your stored fat, which is a new concept for a lot of people. So it, it's the best thing to improve your profiles. In fact, it's like, uh, from my viewpoint, I don't know of any other way that to do it. It's the carbs that mess up your cholesterol more than anything. All right, and then let's go to uh, Susan from Minnesota, which is nice good and morning, warm Good right morning, good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad I got a chance to talk to you. I'm a mess, Dr. Berg, and I'll try to make this as quick as possible. Sure. Um, I've been diabetic for 25 years, hypothyroid for at least 10. I've been on keto and intermittent fasting since August 1st. I lost 14 pounds, boom, just like that. Since then, I haven't gained any, but I haven't lost any, and I've never been in ketosis. So um, you had a formula about high cholesterol, how to determine if your cholesterol was in the danger zone. Mm -hmm. My number came out to be a 36. 
six, which you indicated was concerning. Mm -hmm. Trying to find a keto-friendly cardiologist has been very difficult, although I found one who is willing to work diet-wise with me. My cholesterol has always been high um, in years gone by, but right now it's at 385. My triglycerides, however, only 122. Mm. Or I'm sorry, just I can't see this. Um, my question is, if I'm doing um, high fats and I'm not getting into ketosis and my cholesterol is this high, am I doing my body harm by still ingesting that much fat? Okay, so real quick, are you doing um, the are you doing the version of keto based on my book, or are you just uh, just doing kind of regular low carb in? No, I'd be using your your okay, your book. Okay, good. And are you adding things like MCT oil and extra keto bombs and a lot of those things? Or are you just using getting the fat from your diet? Uh, no, I do uh, keto bombs. I do uh, coconut oil. And uh, that's a question I have, too. Is, is MCT oil better than coconut oil? Yeah. Okay, so uh, MCT oil will give you a more concentrated amount of ketones. And I think uh, what I would do if I were you is probably just do a little bit of MCT oil and not do any keto bombs right now and get your, because what's happening is you have a history of uh, a lot of probably bad foods, right? And so that's going to take some time. And you're going to have to really go as clean as possible, no extra little things yet with the keto bombs, just simply because probably there's a fatty liver, probably there's severe insulin resistance, and so your body, um, we want to just, we want to focus on doing the basic keto with a lot more intermittent fasting. Like I would go one meal, probably one meal every other day since you plateaued, and really take advantage of those longer fasts so you can, um, you can actually get the insulin down. Now, the other thing that when you work with this cardiologist, I'm sure they're going to get a deeper, more sophisticated test with the LDL. So you can know the different types, A and B, LDL, which is the large buoyant versus the small dense LDL. I think what you're going to find from that is that you're going to, your large buoyant LDL is going to be a lot more than the other one. Um, and that's actually, you're going to probably find, wow, I, was, I didn't have to worry about this as much. But I'd rather you get that test to find out for yourself. So even though the cholesterol is high, it's, it's coming from the amount of fat burning that's happening from the cells because there's fat that's being mobilized from the fat cells. Um, so that's what I would do if I were you. Um, and I think you'll be, you'll be fine. Thanks for your call. All right, Karen. What do we got? Okay, so it came up after the conversation on potassium. We got a lot of conversation on how great bananas are in terms mm -hmm. of delivering potassium. So yeah. I'm going to let you handle that. Okay. Bananas have 300 milligrams per, um, per medium-sized banana. So you need 4,700. So Steve, do the math. How many bananas do you have to eat to get 4,700? You're good at math. How many times does 300 go into 4,700? Wow, let's see. Am I going to say 12 or something? Yeah, like I think it's, it's more than that, but yeah, you could be, you're close. <laughs> yeah, it's probably. So, 15, 15 here. or here's 16. The here's yeah. the problem. Uh, if you try to get your potassium from bananas, you're also going to be at the same time getting a lot of uh, sugar. sugar and fructose, which is going to put a lot of stress on the liver, and it's not going to be a good thing. So you want to take get potassium without the carbohydrates. So you want to go for these vegetable carbohydrates when you get your potassium. I I'm like sorry. it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey. All right. What there else you got? There you have it. That's what I got right now. That's all you got? Okay, yeah. good. Let's go to um, Sophia from Ontario. What should I do for high estrogen and cholesterol? These are good questions. Are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Great. <laughs> thanks. Okay, uh, I want to thank you first for taking my call. Uh, I'm on keto diet for one year now. Uh, uh, recently, I'm, I'm doing very good, by the way. Uh, recently, I went for blood work, uh, blood test, and 
it shows that I have high cholesterol and estrogen together. Um, but my gallbladder is removed. The reason why I'm asking about that because um, I want to know maybe because of that and if I ha need any support for my gallbladder. Mm. Good question. All right, so you, you have a very good question. So the answer is, if you had your gallbladder removed, chances are you're probably going to be deficient in bile, which means that you're not going to have the very fluid that helps you break down cholesterol properly. So I would recommend considering, with the help of your doctor, to start taking some purified bile salts so you could start to break down this cholesterol a little bit more. That being said, anyone that has any questions on cholesterol, please watch my recent video that I did on good and bad LDL. That will explain a lot more on the differences and you don't have to be worried about cholesterol, um, especially if you understand the difference between the different types of, types of cholesterol, especially LDL. Um, and there's, there's a lot of additional data on that that um, you can go into as far as even if you had high cholesterol, um, people instantly think they're going to have a problem with their heart, but there's, there's actually, ironically, no credible studies that show that it's going to be, um, you're going to have a higher risk of having a heart attack. Now, that might sound exactly the opposite of what you've been told and what I've been told, but before you believe that, look at these videos, look at the studies that we're talking about, then make up your own mind so you're so that way you know for yourself and you're not being duped into these some of these crazy studies out there which are funded by you know who all right karen you had a question <laughs> anna has a question she's lost 62 pounds that's pretty good on healthy ketosis yeah and she wants to start introducing fruits back into the diet mm. so she wants your opinion on how to do that because she realizes she doesn't want to get insulin resistance. Well, I just did a video on can I do fruit after I um, reached my goal on the keto diet. Wow. I just did the video. So that is hysterical. I think we're on the same wave page, uh, same pa uh, wavelength, or actually the same page. But the, the point is the problem with fruit is the fruit nowadays is different than what, you, what we had way back. They're hybrids. They're very high on carbohydrates, like an apple, for example. Honey crisp apple is like way more sugar than a lot of candy out there. Hmm. So, versus the crab apple. So I tell you what, you can do fruit as long as you eat crab apples, okay, small <laughs> ones here and there. And you can also have as many lemons as you want. And uh, avocado is a fruit, so you can have that. You can have some tomatoes, which is a fruit. Um, you can also do some a small amount of berries. And pomegranate seeds is something else that what you can do as well. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't do cherries, I wouldn't do grapes, I wouldn't do these sweet fruits because it's just too much sugar. There you go. All right, but crab apples um, are my favorite. Okay, <laughs> Connie from Richmond, Virginia, right down the street. You had a question. Are you there? Yes, uh, Dr. Berg, yes. Um, I love your videos, by the way. Um, I do, I have one to two meals a day. Okay. And I'm not, I, I'm not hungry, so I uh, have a hard time getting more than like 850 or 900 calories. Is, is that okay? Okay, good question. Eat that food? Very good question. Um, when you eat, make sure your food is nutrient dense. And I would also full, actually substitute that diet with some other nutri extra supplement things to get your, your basics. I have a lot of videos on that. Because really the purpose of food is to give you fuel and nutrients. So if you get the nutrients, you can get that from other ways, not just food. You don't need the calories because guess what? You are living off of your own fat. Your own fat will provide the healthiest calories that you can eat um, because they turn into ketones. And ketones are super healthy. So when you're not eating food, realize you are eating when you're not eating because you're eating your own fat. So uh, I wouldn't worry about the calories. Go by what, where your hunger is. If you're not hungry, that means your body is living off your fat. So why would you want to eat? So I hope that answered that. All right, Karen. 
What do you got? <laughs> These guys are amazing. Okay, so what about an underweight person? Can they do keto? Yeah, I think uh, for, for other benefits, uh, for if you want a healthy brain, if you want a good heart, um, if you want to maintain your weight, you're going to have to eat more uh, calories when you eat and probably do workouts. Um, those two will help keep the muscle mass there. And, uh, but the benefits of intermittent fasting are good for everyone except... Keto was the question. Mm, keto as well. So the benefits from keto and intermittent fasting are good for everyone except if you're pregnant, I wouldn't do intermittent fasting. But, or baby. Um, right. Good. Is that a good no answer? Okay. Um, <laughs> La Vida from San Antonio, Texas. Are you there? Hello. Hello. Hey, yes, I am. There she is. Hello. Hi there. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I had a hysterectomy 10 years ago, had cancer, thyroid cancer 10 years ago. Therefore, I'm on synthetic um, synthroid. I was type 2 diabetic and was taken off metformin back in March after doing the keto diet. And I've maintained a healthy A1C without it at about 5.5, 5.6. I have not been, I kind of fell off the wagon and I have my doctor's appointment with her next week. So I have no idea where I'm at right now. Um, <clears throat> along with that, I have MS and I have to take a medication twice a day with food preferably fat and protein, mm -hmm. and wanted to know how, can, once I get back on keto, of course, my endocrinologist doesn't care for keto, and I told her, but I, I really like her because she saved my life, mm -hmm. um, but I'm doing what I want to do, and I want to know how can I, when I get back on keto, and once I'm stabilized on keto, I, I want to um, do intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. and want to know what is your suggestion? Okay, so I think what I would do, and I highly recommend you do intermittent fasting, especially if you have MS, but you also need to take a lot of vitamin D. Watch my video on MS and vitamin D. There's some great research. Um, I would add a little, um, instead of a meal, just do a little bit of MCT oil. Okay, so that way it turns into ketones, get your, some fat to your diet, and you're still, you'll, you won't break ketosis uh, it may slow down your weight loss just a little bit, but you'll still be in ketosis. So that's a way to overcome that. Just add a little MCT oil when you take your, you know, medication. Um, but that's what I would do. I am going to talk about, I'm going to create a video, maybe I'll do it on Sunday or Monday, on a very, very interesting on cancer that is just fascinating data, fascinating the history of cancer. Um, I'm just so interested in it, so I'm going to create a video on this. I'm not going to tell you what it is, simply because we are running out of some time. But if you stay tuned and watch my videos, you're going to learn about it. What do you got? Karen? Not the treatment of cancer. You'll have to find out. It's the cure for cancer. <laughs> I know it's not. No, I know it's, that it's, that's not going to happen. Let me tell you what it is. It's, okay. it's a it very, out. very amazing, deep understanding of exactly what cancer is. And I've, I've done some videos on this, but not this one part of it, um, which I've just learned about. And it's just, it, just understanding the history, like it, it completely will change your viewpoint on cancer. And so it's not about a treatment, it's just understanding it more. It's just, it's just mm. fascinating, which will then will help you overcome it or prevent it. Mm. Yeah. Good. Yes. Well, we're all looking forward to that. Well, I'm, You're going to do that to today? It. No, I'm going to do it. Um, I want to do it on Friday because I'm, I, have, I already have today all allocated what I'm going to talk about. Oh, next Friday. No. I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to do a video on it. Uh, so right. next Friday, we are going to be not out of here. Towns. Yeah. So for the next two weeks, guys, next two Fridays, we're not going to be here. But following that, we will be here. Yeah. But I'm going to be releasing two videos a day. So stay, in, stay tuned for that. And, um, and have a great holiday, whatever you celebrate. Have a wonderful celebrate. holiday. If you're not celebrating, relax. Take advantage of the improved traffic. If, you, if you're if you going to have a cheat day on that holiday, go right back. Don't have like a like an extended cheat no month. No cheat month. Steve. Steve. And yeah. uh, 
have a great New Year's. Yeah, and we'll see you next year. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. See you later.